In this video, we are going to learn about mutually inclusive events. This phrase, mutually inclusive, means some overlap. So two events are mutually inclusive if it's possible for both events to happen at the same time. They won't necessarily always happen at the same time, but there's some overlap. So for example, if we thought about the sample space of all the numbers that you could get when you roll a die, and in particular, we thought about two different events. One of those events is rolling an odd number. So remember, our odd numbers would be 1, 3, and 5 for a day. The other event is going to be rolling a number less than 4. So the numbers less than 4 would be 1, 2, and 3. So let's just make this clear. 1, 2, and 3 are numbers less than 4. And 1, 3, and 5 are our odd numbers. So if we look at this, we see that there's some overlap. Both 1 and 3 occur in both events. So that's why these two circles in our Venn diagram overlap, because there is some overlap. 1 and 3 happen in both events. So if we were to fill in the actual numbers, 1 and 3 would go here. 5 would be an odd number that's not less than 4, and 2 would be a number less than 4 that's not odd. Now let's think about probabilities. The probability of getting an odd number is just 3 out of 6, because there are 6 numbers and 3 of them are odd, so that reduces to 1 half. Similarly, the probability of getting a number less than 4 is also 3 out of 6, or 1 half. Now, what about if I asked, what's the probability that you roll either an odd number or a number less than 4? In this case, you cannot just add up your two probabilities because then you would get one, and you know that it's possible to get a number that's not odd or less than four. So the probability can't be 100% that you're going to get an odd number or a number less than four. So because these events are mutually inclusive and have some overlap, you can't just add up the separate probabilities to get your answer. If we look at our Venn diagram, what you'll notice is if you add up the two probabilities, what you're doing is counting this center section where the one and the three are twice. You've counted that probability in the odd number and in the less than four. So one way to think about this is to just look and see how many possible numbers there are. We have five, one, three, and two. So there are four numbers out of the six that we have possibly when you roll a die. But sometimes you might be working with a bigger problem that has more of outcomes than you want to list out in your Venn diagram or in your situation, and you might want to use some sort of formula. So in that case, you can think about, well, the probability that the number is odd or less than 4 will just be the probability that it's odd, so this circle right here, plus the probability that it's less than 4, and that will help us to include this circle over here. But now we've included this center part twice, so we need to subtract out the probability of the center part in order to make sure we haven't counted it double, counted it twice. So we're going to subtract the center part, which is the probability that it's both odd and less than 4, because that's where they overlap. So minus the probability that it's odd and less than 4. 
So this leads us to sort of a general formula for calculating the probability of that two events could happen, one or the other. In general, the probability that A or B occurs will be the probability that A occurs plus the probability that B occurs minus the probability that they both occur at the same time. And that minusing part accounts for any possible double counting. Keep in mind, this will work whether or not the events are mutually inclusive or perhaps mutually exclusive. Because if the events could never occur at the same time, this probability over here would just be zero and you'd be left with simply the sum of the two separate probabilities.